Okay, so today I'm going to be taking a look at um, some more figures. Uh, I'm going to pose again with the Portrait Studio model uh, because there is a bit of a perspective problem with this piece. I also wanted to talk, I may have time for this, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about this study um, and how to uh, study figures using shapes but um, keeping the shape language intact so you're, I'll talk about it in a second. Um, and then these and creating a balanced standing figure. Um, also talk a little bit about this <laughs> stock photo with the watermark on it. <laughs> but let's talk about the Huntress here. Um, so the perspective is from top down. She's walking up a slope, the camera's pointing down at her. Um, some things that you aren't doing are not stacking this area. So we're seeing her torso from a head-on view but her body and the top of her chest and the head look beneath the neckline from a top view. Um, the shrinking of the legs towards the bottom, those are obviously not the standing, fit, like, leveled length of her, of her legs. This camera is really high, higher than her, probably by like a meter or half a meter, um, and um, altitude-wise. And, uh, and the... Uh, the little silhouette right over here is not uh, making any sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up the Portrait Studio model to have the exact same pose. So I'm going to try to do it by having both open. Alright, so the first and most important thing to do is to get the angle right. Then I need to zoom in and just shift it up. All right, she's also a little bit to the side. All right, and then we're stacking one object in front of the other. We're setting it up like that. And so I'm gonna shift the head first so I can get a perspective better. Face is over there. The other arm, this arm, if I can get the right thing for it is in the back holding the spear, hiding behind the breasts. So she's kind of like twisting her chest a little bit as well. And her head is turning a little more than that now that I've twisted her body. Okay. After that, I'm going to push up the arm and then push down the wrist as she's holding her weapon. The other arm is kind of just chilling on the side, also backward a little bit, so she's walking up very feminine, and all right, this leg is forward, tilted in, and kind of shifted inward, the knee is back. Doing with the climb. And this leg is all the way behind. Alright. So now what we're seeing is so I want to show you guys what I mean. See how the rib cage, what we're seeing here in the rib cage is more of a camera beneath her. But this style of rib cage where we would see the side of the body a little bit more we see less of the breast because we're so high up. So you're doing this for this entire region instead of doing this with the breasts. I twisted her body. I shifted it. As for her body shifting even more, so she does look like she's walking up something. I feel like her, her, yeah, her arm might be a little bit more straight than that. like her arms feel a little bit stiff. And I feel like the walk cycle that you're doing is not actually appropriate. It's not ac it's not accurate to what's happening. So when we walk, so I'm walking. So one arm is ahead, one arm is behind along with the legs. I don't know if it's the opposite. Uh, sometimes it's the opposite, sometimes it's not, but Let's just see what we have here. She's got the weapon, so this weapon would be up a little bit higher. Oh god, I fucking hate 
these controls. Okay, so what we're seeing with the chest, even after we shifted it, I'm going to push the arm in a little bit. It's a heavy object, so I might weigh her arm down a little. Okay, as for the field of view, we might benefit more from turning off, so, sorry, turning on the field of view. I'm just going to shrink it a little bit. So we actually feel like she's walking up the hill. Field of view gives you that really, really cool first person foreshortening effect. Okay. I would move her entire body forward, her head forward a little bit. Because if she is walking in such a way where She's kind of haunched forward. I'm just going to push her neck forward a little. And I would move her head forward as well. Oops. Alright, so now you get more of a balanced placement of the arm beside the torso instead of uh, tucked against the torso instead of beside the torso. It feels like this entire arm has been just completely warped out. And that's something that happens a lot with you guys. You guys don't place the arm to lock inside the shape beside. So what I'm looking at here is when you guys are completing these shapes, you're not actually constructing these shapes so that things lock in together. Okay, I am like dying right now because there's a really, really horrible mosquito bite and it's just murder. It's just straight up slaughter right now. It's killing me. Um, anyway. So right here, when you guys study your figures like this, so let's say you did use Portrait Studio to study this kind of figure. Let's make it even more intense, a uh, perspective change. Um, I, I forgot how to turn off. <laughs> Damn it. I forgot how to turn them off. Abu! Abu! Um, I think it's in the... Uh, uh, right here. Um, oh, I, f I forgot where. I haven't memorized. The settings changed again. They're going to change in the soon update anyway. I know there's a... There, let me, I know someone just posted that question. Alright, give me a second. I'm just looking it up. But if you guys were to study these, let's say you studied right right on that. Okay, diffuse, collapse, high joints. Did I just see it? Oh, I'm so dumb. It was right there. Um, <laughs> help. Uh, yeah, I know, I'm so dumb. Uh, so let's say you grab this exact study right here, all right? So I'm just going to use green shot here and grab a nice little screenshot and you wanted to study this piece what one thing that I ask my students to do is to trace over diagrams but because this piece is already so pieced together it's already showing a lot of the sections just by the nature of the mannequin we've in order for us to move it without depending on like a fully unified skin or worrying about all that really that difficult to pose realistic stuff we had to work in plates so we separated these plates from each other. And what that led us to you know, benefit is that now we can see exactly where each component sits with the other. And now what you are responsible for doing, and this might be something I include later on just for study purposes, is you, you just adding in blocks, basic blocks that are a poseable mannequin. Um, because it's really wonderful to be able to track down the z-axis and all the cube that is underneath all of these three-dimensional shapes. You guys tend to forget these. So when we're talking about the side cube here of this, which slowly, again, because it's customized into a more realistic shape, we don't see it as a perfectly, as a perfect kind of even symmetrical width. So it kind of just tucks away, and that's one reason why you guys don't see the cube. But this little piece right here, and let's color code something else. 
and this little piece on top, they lock together. One is beside the other. One hovers beside the other to lock in. And you guys forget to add that in your work. I'm sorry about the mouse. All right. So they lock right in. They click together. You guys forget to do that, which is why a lot of the work that you guys do feels like the arm has been completely shifted out. So using our reference here, and I'm just going to use it very, very um, <clears throat> freely. I'm not going to, because I added field of view, just to show how it's much better with field of view on. Because in a camera, if you were filming it, you would get field of view. There's really no way around it in the real world. Unless you like distort the camera in such a way where it corrects the field of view by giving a more straight on character. But all of this stuff that we're seeing, this arm is above and ahead of the body instead of being right beside. And once I proportionately put this together, and I understand why you made it big because it was a, a perspective marker. The upper, upper body is much bigger than the lower. As for the piece itself, like as a whole, the illustration is way too dark. You need a much more like direct light source. You need to figure out what it is that you're doing. See how this cast shadow is nice and in the way? feels like the sun is there. The cast shadow doesn't give a shit what it's falling on. It's just gonna it's just gonna fall where it falls. That's the kind of shadow you guys need to have in your work. You need to stop having glamour shadows that make no sense. See what happens with the arm when we have foreshortening on uh, or field of view. It actually feels like the arm is in the distance towards the base. But look at your arm. It, it feels like we are looking head on at the character because the entire torso was painted in such a way where we were looking head on. And that means the arm is massive. It sounded like uh, Christopher Walken there for a second. Is that what his name is? It was massive. <laughs> Stupid. Okay, so. So what I'm trying to do is just tuck in more of the lower belly and stick out more of the upper belly until we get this system because I'm starting with the torso always start with the perspective of the torso write that back to me so now I'm going to enlarge the head it's such little contrast towards the top especially because yeah she has this big dark Saruman hand on her head that we're not seeing much of the character anyway I'm going to have to shift the chest a little bit long army boy Sorry, did I say army? Alright. Alright, so obviously we do the perspective of the body, but if you're doing this as a gesture, find the head size first, if anything. Because the head size right now is what's helping us develop the field of view. So she actually looks like she's in the distance. The arm, I can't do it with liquify because I need to do a whole massive thing right now, which is getting as much of the body selected without the background and then just doing that, tucking her lower and then selecting the arm. So I'm gonna just merge that down. Selecting the arm and throwing it into some perspective as well. Okay, so now she actually looks like she's walking up. I've tucked the arm in and locked it, clicked it right into its joint. It's no longer floating and out of place and she no longer looks like she has a male body, which was what was happening before. So simple, really simple, easy to pose it on Portrait Studio and you can move it around. So what I used to do is I used to, when I dealt with perspectives like this for studies, I used to have a stupid little mannequin on my table and I'd just have to keep holding it. But if mannequin is what you have and you have like a little stand for it, pose it in such a way where you are the camera and don't move your head so much because you're just going to keep distorting the perspective. Okay, so I shifted up the elbow and I changed that big arm. Alright, so as for what happens with 
our brush, what, what do we do with our brush when we're shading? So you see how we don't see the lower part of her belly button, we just see the upper part because the, the light is top down. Well, you shaded the light as if it was coming from the side, so let's do that. Let's change the light source. Okay. The light source is moving that way. So I'm just taking a picture, closing this bad boy, opening this bad boy and just looking at what's happening with the camera. So the light is coming from the side, but you don't have enough contrast. Not in the entire image, not on the character, and there's not enough contrast at all to go around so we can see this character. So that's our next step. Is that we're just gonna block in. I'm sorry about the blocking job I'm doing. It's with a soft brush, you gotta get this done fast. Okay, so there's a nice little cast shadow right there. It's a really, really strong cast shadow coming off the chest and then that's the remainder of the light source coming through so we get to see a lot of this really really nice buildup of form assisted by the cast shadows All right, so look at that the world is already starting to get built the world is coming together because without a light source you don't really have a world and even though she's got paint on her face, it can still sneak in some core shadows. Because right now the perspective on the head, how low the forehead um, hairline is, the lack of light, everything just feels extremely, extremely drowning in shadow. Need more light on this inside of the belly button. So the artist said that they like it, they're proud of it. I suggest you go back and try again. This was just one study. This was just one object in perspective that you had, let's say, 10 mistakes with. The next time you do it, you're gonna have an object in perspective with maybe eight mistakes. And you're gonna keep going until you have one mistake and it's gonna look great. Eventually one day you'll have no mistakes. Or if you do, it won't be noticeable because your lighting job and the perspective job is so well done. A small little anatomy problem here and there, it doesn't count. So never be scared of throwing in these massive long cast shadows because that's what the, the, the program is telling us, that's what the perspective is telling us is happening. So trust it. And, and force shortening for females isn't so much giving her massive rock climber, uh, steroidal, whatever, arm size. It's just about shifting the neckline way beneath. So we don't even see a neckline. And we'll take a look at what yours looked like before. It's like you were forcing two perspectives at the same time. And this always happens when students are dealing with uh, any kind of high or low camera. They, f they don't know what to do in which, in which order. So the order always gets confused. And this, this thigh would be way ahead of the foot. Starting a bit thicker. Okay. All right, and then we have arm. Oh, this arm's completely screwed. My bad, I forgot to liquefy that. And you see how it's a little bit too thin? I mean, you can enlarge it if you feel like the perspective there is just a bit too much. You can cheat a lot. You don't have to make it as small as all that. The foot here doesn't have to be that small. But it's, it's a small little amount that you can actually change it with. You don't have a lot of wiggle room. You do have wiggle room, though. So remember that. You write that back to me. You do have a wiggle room, but you don't have a lot of wiggle room. And there's this beautiful cast shadow of the entire torso on the arm. And look for landmarks. Always look for these landmarks, the arm, the torso. They are the big, the arm joint, sorry, the torso. Like I said before, the legs really, when it comes to perspective, aren't that difficult to put into perspective. The hardest thing to put into perspective and the thing that is the most ignored is the torso. So always see, after you get the head and the spine in place size-wise, find the perspective, perspective of the torso first, if you can. Let's just say she's got bigger boobies than the 
than the reference, but still I feel like the breasts are a bit off. So people were asking about a date on how to draw boobs, um, so I would just need to see you guys do some work. So between now and Thursday, if you guys want a breasts only, all about breasts, double D's, triple A's, <laughs> if you guys want uh, some breasts, Thursday's class will have that as long as you guys are posting some attempts at breasts on the community. So I don't know how YouTube is going to deal with that. I don't know if they're going to just like pop a, ves a blood vessel um, dealing with my video. Uh, but it's okay if I don't have to monetize it. I really don't care. Um, I probably won't be allowed to anyway. But even if it's for educational purposes, they won't because advertisers and whatnot. It doesn't really matter. But, um, but it might get flagged or I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. But I'll, I'll see what I can do. I paint pretty realistically when I'm editing these, and you guys are pretty good. So the, the, the flagger people might see it as way too realistic, but even if it's educational. So that's what that's what got me the strike by the way I was looking for references even though it's educational I was looking for references so draw some boobies and, uh, and I'll see what I can do I haven't been given a rep yet because I'm not at 100k as soon as I hit 100k so come on guys subscribe already Jesus Christ <laughs> I don't know I know I haven't been like calling people to subscribe to me I've been pretty like modest in that department but I need an agent so that I could tell them, hello, I'm going to be doing a boobies video. Please don't let me get flagged. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm getting another color. I'm getting a warmer skin tone color. I'm going to find, I'm going to try to find this exact color on the wheel here. See that? See how these two are really working well together? Well, that's the color I'm going to use on the chest. Yeah, guys, it's not going to kill you to subscribe. See how I warmed it up? See how now it looks like she's glowing, a little bit sweaty? And that's just the yellow in the in the combination. I really recommend you rethink this, um, this doohickey. And if you did use Portrait Studio, and it honestly feels like you did, you're, you may not have used it properly. You may have been misusing your reference or, again, not choosing the right perspective or not turning on field of view. When are we allowed to ask questions? Wasn't your strike for guy boobs? No, it was, it was not guy boobs. It was like for guy legs and a guy butt because we were looking for references for figures. That was why I got the strike. It was so stressful. Oh my god, it was like the worst. This whole year started off with so much crap. Freak stalking me at the gym and fucking strike. The whole dog situation. <laughs> god damn, I haven't had a break. Um, Alright, so the scene, the entire scene is a bit too dark. I would start by just bringing in some bounce light of some kind. Let me see if I can mess around with your... I mean, I can't because levels work as the, as a whole. I can't really mess with your levels all that much. Let me shift things over. This might look a little bit more realistic. You might benefit from a cash shadow on the, uh, on the foliage behind her. And uh, I need to smudge, but the smudge isn't working. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's not enough smudge. Um, bodies are bodies like, stop making it a sexy thing. Yeah. I got a dog, and it turned out I was allergic to him and I had to return him, but the breeder was a bastard. <laughs> we got a Sheba, and uh, every time she shook, I thought I was going to have an asthma attack. Anyway, this is class time. Um, this cast shadow might actually extend a little bit higher. Darken. 
because the leaf is higher. Okay. And then I'm not really sure what this is. Is this like the v Venus? Is this like a planet? Is this a planet behind him and this is space? This is empty space? What is what is going on in this area? What is what is this? Is this a tree? What is it? What is going on here? What is this? What is it? Is it just like a, a thing? What is this in the original? I mean, am I talking smack and it's not in the original? All right, well it is. I have no idea what it is. But you guys just saw the before and after. I'm just going to let it sit there as like a fog. I also encourage you to show distant and kind of like atmospherically faded foliage the further down you go. So So that way you're actually showing a, a distance behind her. So let me see if I can do a better job here. Been a couple of random ass lasso, sorry. So darken. And they're just getting lighter and lighter the further we go. Oh come on! Alright. Maybe you can have. No, it's just stupid. Here. I'll do a better job. So you're just climbing slowly but surely lower into the distance of the jungle. And you can afford to bring in some, like, basic light just peeking through some of these shrubberies. I mean, they don't have to be completely just stacked. <laughs> because uh, what's happening here is that this entire half of the canvas feels so heavy. I'm just going to pretend that, you know, this is what it's supposed to be. And then this, this atmospheric light, I'm now bringing it on the ground beneath her. And it's slowly, again, fading the further down we go into the jungle. This is how you manage an entire illustration. You find the light source, direction, find the environment color. It helps you sort exactly what you're doing with your details. Larger brush strokes, more distance between the breaks in the soil, the closer we get to the camera. Less distance between the breaks in the soil, the further we get, because perspective uh, um, crap, what's the word? It's not stacks. It, it, uh, it is stacks, but it's not the word I want to use. It compresses. There we go. As for her position in the canvas, I just, again, I just feel like everything is so left heavy. I feel like placing her right there and shrinking her might be a better choice for your canvas. Okay, so she's taking up less space. Doesn't feel like an awkward crop. She's more towards the left. She's taking up less of that far side. She's less close to the top of the canvas. And everything just looks better overall. And then finally, what I'm going to do is just bring in a color wash. <coughs> over the entire piece. And the reason why I'm doing that is because her colors right now are just not combining with her environment very well. I'm going to use more blue towards her feet, less towards the top. I'm going to also bring in some contrast and focal points. So I'm just using my dodge tool. I'm going to follow up with a desaturation because dodge tools are spaz. And I would, I would really think about the placement of this breast here because it feels like this breast is sitting away from the rest of the body. It's really weird. It's difficult to describe what I mean. I mean, closer to the edge and then 
over here. I'm just going to pretend it's all one shadow. Okay, so the breast is less towards the center. Like there's space for a third boobie in there. It's a triple A stuff. Okay, another cool thing that you can do is grab this entire upper body. Let me merge it down. Grab it, cut it, and just stack it on top. That way you have less distance between layers on the torso. So see that? So it feels like you're stacking even more. The head, you can also do that with the head. So always observe your reference. I think we took enough from our reference right now. You see how awkward it is that she's so close to the, to the top of the canvas? And how little, like, little uh, contrast you have all around. Let me use mid-tone. I think you need a bit more uh, brightness towards this side. Brightness in general. But there's only so much I can do in a single class. All right. Before, you see how you're trying to force perspective? It seems like her feet are just short, like they're, um, what are those things that are half goat called? I forget. Before, really dark, muddy colors. If it's nighttime, again, who chooses nighttime for an illustration scene? It's just, you always have to bring in floodlights and filming anyway if you're going to be filming at night so it's not even nighttime actual nighttime darkness unless they're actually going for that in a movie which is rare to find I would just shift the whole torso over even more and tuck that arm in the distance because that arm is supposed to be the one that's in the back so it would be more like like that. Do you see that? Um, which layer am I working with right now? So any questions at all about this piece? Please don't ask me irrelevant questions. the arm before? After. And then this is before I fix the arm. It's a slight change, but it's definitely helping. Oh. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Did a pretty good job. Hopefully you know what to do with the info as to Brad Cave, yeah. Uh, yeah, good job, Sarah. Yeah, I was feeling like her foot is going back, but her knee is coming front. Um, yeah, I, I think you should place this entire leg back there. Yeah, I totally agree. And bring this leg forward. This leg might be a little bit because it's higher, so it might get a bit more foreshortening. Just like that. See that? Because it's a little bit higher than the other leg by a touch. Again, before, that arm was humongous. After. And I do recommend shrinking her along the horizon. Deciding what your light environment environment is Bringing some brightness into the background, a place you can start, and balancing your colors really important. Please balance your colors. So I'm just bringing some brightness into the background around her, just to show where that light might be. Yes, the, the saturation's all off, so I'm going to desaturate, bring things down to a humble color, and uh, just keep going. See how much work. 
sense it makes that we have this brightness available to us in the illustration. Okay, but you gotta balance it. You gotta decide how much green you want in her skin tone and how much red you want in the background. They can't be completely different values from each other. So what I would do is bring in more green in the flesh tones. And I would do that by shifting over. Ignore the pinks. Just shifting over like that. Getting more green. It's still a flesh color, but it's green and it's a unified light environment. Whereas before, see how purple it was. It wasn't the same environment. I think you fix the legs by cutting off at the knees with the muddy water. Um, I can't even tell if it is muddy water. Do you stack naturally? What do you mean? How would you suggest to draw a multi-perspective person, for example, a person passing by a teleport gateway with some perspective deformations? I would have to see a picture of it. It's hard for me to tell exactly what, I'm, what you're describing. Is she a midget? No, that's the perspective at the moment that's making you guys think that. Just look at look at the width of the legs in comparison to the torso, but all of that in comparison to the shoulders. You see what I mean by the torso needing to be a bit thicker? Oh. Deselect, filter, liquefy. For those who are interested in a copy of Portrait Studio, there's going to be a big sale in October. So if you're struggling with the price right now, uh, there will be a really, really big, almost 50% off sale on Portrait Studio October 1st. So if you can wait, wait. If you need it now, I mean, I can't stop you. But I do one of these sales every once in a while. Tops three times a year. Two times, really, for a sale that this big. The Mac version will also be available for Mac users. See that? How it was cut off and after. And all these questions are being answered with a reference. You cannot experiment with perspective without a reference. Write that back to me. It's like you're trying to run some sort of really, really high graphics game without any of the hardware needed for it. It's just not possible. You just don't have the information or the resources, mental resources, to produce a successful motion in perspective, especially extreme perspective like this. What I recommend is, it looks like it's a gloomy day, so what I recommend is some raindrops. But the raindrops are in perspective. So you got raindrops that are like that. See how they're supporting the perspective a little bit. Merge layers. They're not all well placed. Careful not to let them be this intense. Every time you do rain, a simple line is all you need as long as you go back with a soft brush and adjust its taper and its tail. A bit of fog, go-to fog, artist's best friend. Where are you, my fog brush? <clears throat> I'm gonna use this color over here, this beautiful environment color for all the fog. I like how the leaves are weighing down so it actually feels like we are getting some fog. I still would shrink her along the perspective though. So before, after. You can't experiment with protect, with perspective without reference. Some people seem to pull it off, maybe because they're working on it off stage. Maybe they have a lot of studies behind them. Maybe they're just freaks with photorealistic memory. I really don't know. But um, yeah, rain is just a line. Just modify a tail with a soft brush. Yeah. Don't even freaking try perspective without a reference to McGriddle. McGriddle, change your name before you get banned, dude. You can't experiment with, protect, uh, with protection. Uh, people, just write it down. You'll forget this. Yes, you will forget it if you don't write it down. Um, maybe that black spot in the top was like a tree branch. 
It was too blobby of a tree, tree branch. I mean, come on, you can add other tree branches that are a little bit more like a tree branch. The environment feels out of perspective compared to the body. Um, I'm seeing the top of the leaves. We could see the top of another leaf here nearby instead of another branch. We could we could look at some leaves from like a perspective. Just like that. Just as she's walking towards it. Maybe some extra little leaves here and there. But you need to outline why it, what she's doing, what she's coming out of, where the light's coming from and I'm just following the light you chose. I would choose a light from top down. I would choose a top down light source. And in the upcoming update for Portrait Studio, by the way, all updates are free for those who purchase Portrait Studio, but in the up upcoming update there will be a slider and that slider will give you soft shadows. So right now we don't have that, um, but uh, we do have it right now. The update is all prepared. But we're waiting until October 1st so we can send out the update. The update might raise the price of Portrait Studio up. Again, I always do this before every time we raise the price up by a bit. There is a small, there is a big sale. Um, and um, yeah, but that slider will be there for those who want to experiment with soft light. I would make it a top-down soft light because it's a gloomy day, it's raining, but it's still midday enough that we can see it. But if it's sunset, the environment will be orange, will be dim, will be warm. Something a little bit more like this, but less green and blue. Because right before nighttime, which is very blue, we get lots of warmth. Oh, whoopsie. It's just so hard to shift this. All the colors are so unusual. I see how you have so much cool and then so much warm cool. Okay, um, really appreciate the critique. I will definitely go back and make adjustments. Um, all I would want you to do is pick up the study, the study stats off of it, the, the mileage you get from the study aspect, which is just sketch, just sketch the perspective um, and uh, see what you can do with uh, medicating the deformative deformations that happen because of your current view of this perspective. So as long as you're taking a moment to appreciate what you did wrong, you really don't have to redo the whole painting. It's just the painting that you put behind you, but please, 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 please balance your colors. Okay. Um, yes. <clears throat> Let's look at something else. Any questions? Isabek, I think some light on the sphere would make it stand out from the leaves. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. So this is what I had to say on this piece. This piece had no, it was just blobs that was supposed to prepare you for drawing a body, which is not just blobs. It's a combination of organic patterns and curves and geometric patterns. So you didn't have like a side to this torso. We don't know, we don't have perspective if we don't have a cube. All right. There's no perspective in blobs. Write that back. There's no perspective in spheres. Spheres, we could be looking at this from a, look, 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 look at this blob, right? We could be looking at this blob from side view, from front view. We can be looking at it from the bottom, looking up. We can be looking at it from the top, looking down. It's so hard to tell what the hell is happening with this perspective. But this cube, Look at that. You know how you're looking at it. You know you're looking at it from this is the distance and this is the close-up. You know the angle in which it shifted on its axis. So you have a lot of perspective value in a cube and if you're not bringing in the cube in the way you're studying the body, it doesn't, it's not about gesture and it's not about curvaceousness and pinup and or anime. It's about getting the right perspective so that you're reading the right kind of environment in the room you're building the right kind of room and then you know where the camera is. That you need cubes for perspective. Okay? For these pieces, um, my biggest problem with them is they don't look like they're standing. So I don't have time for all the pieces today. They look like they're about to just tip over. Okay, I don't know what you are and I really didn't invite you to my party. 
All right. So before, she's kind of like tipping over. She's like drunk. She's like, oh my God, Becky, I'm going to fall. <laughs> and she's like, oh my God, Susie, I'm going to fall too. All right, I'm just shifting them over so they look like they're tipsy, but they're not, they're not about to fall just yet. Okay. And the reason, the way we know that this is happening in your work, and this happens in really, really advanced pieces, it looks like the character is about to fall, is just make a simple crosshair on the ground and raise a line above it. There should be an equal amount of space between both. But if we were to take that same build and go back and place it, look at how much we have. I'm placing it right at the foot where I placed the other one. Look at how much more we have on one side than the other side. This bitch is about to fall. <laughs> Susie is about to fall down. Becky is about to follow her. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, rich woman as well. So I was about to fall down. Okay. So make sure you guys are looking at that, and when it, even when it comes to perspective like this. I'll use my mouse. You can just make sure that you're seeing more of the X because an X that's flat on the ground has basically been flattened. An X that you're looking at as if you were a bird looking down, you see the complete X. So the more perspective that you have, if you want to prepare yourself, you're saying, okay, I'm going to sketch freehand, let me just try this, or I'm going to use some basic cubes to help me find the perspective. Show more of the X because you're floating above the X so you can see more of it. It's not a complete visibility on it and it does have some foreshortening but it's enough that it's going to help keep you thinking about the perspective there. Right, so you're seeing the piece on top of her like that. And then what all these do together is they become a cube. Sorry. And the cube is doing this. It all goes back to the cube. There is no perspective without a cube. Sorry, my fucking cubes suck right now. <laughs> you draw the lines first, you do this. Okay. And this would be this crosshair, and this would be this crosshair, and this would be the line connecting them, and this would be the size of the head, and this would be the size of the feet. And then you know that everything else stacks all the way down. And that's how you kind of sketch perspective freehand. You just gotta make sure you're showing volume and stacking. Stacking is one object in front of the other, and the volume is just making sure that you're showing more of that distance, that backward stretch of the shoulders, the top of the shoulders, that's the volume. Volume is the difference between a flat cup and a cup that you can fit something in. So when your torso, obviously your torso has volume, it can fit all your organs and all the way down to your hips, you have to show that it's got volume. Volume is this z-axis quality that has Stretch so far, it has hidden the neck. Do you understand? Any questions at all about the class? About the stuff we're covering right now? <coughs> um, I think that's it, because I don't want to leave the uh, the theme. This is more to do with color and contrast. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, so if you are interested in joining the community, go to istabrak.com and click on the Google Plus icon next class, which is this Thursday, the 30th, um, which I hopefully will make it to. Um, you guys are uh, assigned, if anyone's interested, in assigning and in, in joining the assignment, which is going to be all about breasts and the torso, the female torso. So it's not just about boobies, it's about the whole chest area, the stomach area. You guys can go ahead and do um, as much as you need. We'll use Portrait Studio to help us with perspective, try different perspectives. People really like to draw boobies. Um, so, uh, 30th, I invite you guys to try some booby studies and, uh, upload them for me to look at. I, I don't have a class if you guys don't up upload homework. So, it's, the, you know, that the, the, the class is in your hands. So if you guys post a lot, a lot of you join in, good or bad studies, doesn't matter. You're not the judge. I am. I'll take care of the lesson. You just have to do whatever you can. Um, and then post it and learn the lesson, okay? And for those who don't have time to 
uh, make the homework but are still interested, show up on that day because these themes, these, these live streams, I do them as live streams because it feels like I'm uh, communicating with you guys, that there's an exchange of information and, and it's, uh, it's better live, it's better when I'm not just talking into empty space. So uh, do show up on that day if you can. Um, but uh, but this yes, if you if you do need Portrait Studio and you can't afford the current price, which is around seventy dollars, uh, please wait. Uh, is it seventy? I forget what the current price is. Is it seventy? Um, uh, the the first of October. I will list, I will I will release a video two weeks before the sale to tell you guys about the two weeks of the sale. So it will go on for two weeks from the first to the fourteenth. The sale will continue. Please, if you can wait, wait. I don't want you guys to buy it and then see the sale and then get frustrated because you just were out like 50% of the price. Please save your money if you can um, and wait for the sale. Um, I, I, I like when everyone has the resource, but I also want to be able to sell the things that we worked hard on um, and stay as transparent as possible with price spikes and updates and all that. We've gone through so many changes for Portrait Studio and I thank you all for your input and those who emailed. I'm sorry about the last update and the problem we had with the patcher um, that was re really crazy and this time around we're going to check the weather and see if there's any outages or expecting any outages so nothing like that happens again uh, we'll send out a small update first see if that goes through nicely and then we'll release the big one um, uh, so uh, uh, please wait for the first uh, as for the upcoming community challenge the um, pole vault challenge, the environment challenge. I'll release that sometime this weekend so you guys have a complete month to work on it. It will be due on the 4th of October, uh, the Tuesday the 4th. Um, that is when I will look at your submissions and then after the 4th, around the 30th, I'm going to assign the next challenge which is the creepy creature character design challenge. Um, I found this really, really cool post on Imager. I found two really, really cool posts on Imager today, like one after the other. Uh, and I want to show them to you real quick. One of them I will include it in the resource pack for the upcoming challenge. And it is uh, this one, which is a, um, this dude. So this dude is doing a, doing a wushu pole thing. And this is the kind of, kind of interaction that I'm looking for, but with more perspective. So a lot of what we talked about today, see that shit? Like how he managed to get on top of an elevation. He could have landed on something by using this kind of interaction with the pole vault. So it's not just one perfect Olympic form, it's different ways of interacting with the, with the, um, with the pole to, uh, to elevate yourself, to move around a really, really uh, steep environment, a rock environment. I'll include all of that in the written, in the written work. I don't know if I'm, uh, uh, don't worry, the details will be there. And another really, really cool example that I found is in Atlantis when they just found Atlantis, or they were about to find Atlantis, and Milo is encounters the Atlanteans with their little sticks and their spears, and the Atlanteans really, really quickly run away as soon as his friends find him, and they are basically pole vaulting around the rock formations of the cave, so if you haven't seen that, I'll find the reference for it, I'll try to find a gift for it for you guys, and upload it into the resource pack, uh, but, uh, but this is going to be one full illustration it's going to be a completely rendered illustration. I'm giving you guys a month to do it. If for some reason a month is not enough, um, maybe some of you have already started since I've been briefing you guys about this for like a month or so um, almost, but um, if a month is not enough, I'll see if we can override the Creepy Creature Challenge and just continue the the, uh, the pole vault challenge, the uh, environment character design challenge, okay? Um, so that's it. Thank you everyone for joining. If you want to support the class, you can join me on Patreon. Uh, we will have our assignment due date very, very soon. Uh, if you want to join as an apprentice, it's sort of like an equivalent to my private tutoring, but a lot more affordable. Um, and I assign videos. I get hand out uh, the private streams and the time-lapse videos of my own personal art. So the stuff that I've been doing in after hours, I uh, upload the time lapse for that and my commentary and what I experienced while painting it, etc. Uh, brushes, brush sets that I experiment with, um, and you get to be part of the Discord. So if anyone's interested in apprenticeship, uh, you can go there, or if you can just join as a pupil or any other uh, lower tiers, you still get educational material, um, uh, or as a watcher if you just want to support. Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you guys on Thursday. Bye everyone.